Am I on? Yeah. All right. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Reverend Leanne Reet, a reti retired canon for formation for the diocese and um, the former rector of St. John's in Franklinton. And it is my great pleasure to be with you today and worship with you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, what wrong did your ancestors find in me that they went far from me and went after worthless things and became worthless themselves? They did not say, where is the Lord who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us in the wilderness, in a land of deserts and pits, in a land of drought and deep darkness, in a land that no one passes through, where no one lives? I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruits and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priests did not say, where is the Lord? Those who handle the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal. They went after things that do not profit. Therefore, once more I accuse you, says the Lord, and I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coast of Cyprus and look, send to Kedar and examine with care. See if there has ever been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, even though they are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked. Be utterly desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, 
and dug out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that can hold no water. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The psalm for today is Psalm 81. Let's read it responsibly by full verse. Sing with joy to God our strength and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. And yet my people did not hear my voice, and Israel would not obey me. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him, and their punishment would last forever. The second reading is from the letter to the Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison, as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured, as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He also said to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The gospel of the Lord. Praise you.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Need to do a little lowering of the pulpit. Our collect for today includes these words. Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion and nourish us with all goodness. And bring forth in us the fruit of good works. We ask God for quite a bit in this collect. And God answers us in the words of our readings today. Let mutual love continue, the author of Hebrews says. Do not, neglect, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some have entertained angels without knowing it. And Jesus teaches the Pharisees and us about true hospitality. It's not about embarrassing the host, this story, but it's about preparing us for the coming kingdom. Just imagine the scene. Jesus is welcomed in to a banquet hall, and he sees other guests as they scramble for the seats of honor. Without hesitation, Jesus takes the opportunity to teach. He teaches them through parable. He begins with a lesson all the Pharisees would already have known because he's paraphrasing Proverbs 25, verses 6 and 7. That says, do not put yourself forward in the king's presence and stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of the noble. So the Pharisees already knew what they were supposed to do. And they were embarrassed. And as though that admonition was not enough, Jesus makes some suggestions about putting together a guest list. Don't invite people you want to impress or because you owe them a meal because they had you to their house at one point? No. Invite the most unlikely guests, the poor, the lame, the blind, the nobodies. In other words, make every banquet, every gathering a foretaste of the heavenly banquet. There's a story that I just love in the devil's storybook about three sisters who died and went to hell. Now, they found themselves aboard the boat in the river Styx that flows through hell. And the devil is with them on that boat. And they immediately go up to the devil and says, we are sisters. Sister one replied, the last of an important family. We're the sort of people who matter. Sister two said, we can't imagine what you're doing, what we're doing here among these common types. And sister three is more direct. You have made a mistake. Just look at these dreadful people you've got here. Riffraff of the lowest sort. The devil replied, it's true. We do have all sorts down here. But so I've heard does heaven. Well, the sisters couldn't believe what they'd heard. You must 
be mistaken. Only the best people go to heaven. Otherwise, why call it heaven? Well, when the devil reached his destinations, he got on and he promised the sisters that he would look into the situation, and they drifted on, and on, and on, and on. Every once in a while, they'd see the devil and ask him if they checked to see where the mistake had been made. And the devil would just wave and smile and nod his head. Those sisters drifted around and around and around in hell. After a while, the devil forgot all about them. Not because he could not have checked on their situation, but because after all, they weren't the sort of people who mattered. Now, the difference between this story and the story that Jesus told is that in hell, some people don't matter. In heaven, in God's kingdom, everyone matters. And that's the crux of these lessons. It's the, lessons that Je the lesson that Jesus is trying to teach us. In God's kingdom, everyone matters. Everyone is included. Social status counts for nothing in God's realm. What does matter is loving kindness expressed through, through true hospitality and humility. Brennan Manning, in his book, Reckless, Ruthless Trust, says, the heart of humility lies in undivided attention to God. Undivided attention to God. In other words, not undivided attention to me or to you, but to God. He goes on, the heart of humility is, is that humble people are without pretense, free from any sense of spiritual superiority and liberated from the need to be associated with persons of importance. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who I am. And it doesn't matter with whom we associate. What matters is that we give our undivided attention to God. Now, those are hard words for us to hear. After all, we've spent our lifetimes achieving. We've spent our lifetimes becoming what the world defines as successful. And Jesus blows that all out of the water. As we come to this holy table at God's holy banquet, we practice the hospitality that Jesus was talking about. We invite all believers to the table. And we gather around the cosmic table of Christ with all the sorts of people who don't matter to the world, but who matter deeply to God. Strangers from every race, from every gender identity, from every economic and social circumstance, every nation. We eat a common bread and drink from a common cup with the world as we partake in that tiny crumb of bread and sip of wine at communion. And then at the end of our worship, we're sent out. 
were sent away from the banquet and into that world of all those people who matter so much. And we ask God in our closing prayer, our sending prayer, to grant us strength and courage to love and serve Christ with gladness and singleness of heart. We ask God to help us give our undivided attention to God and to God's people. We're invited to go out from this place and gather in all of God's people to the banquet, especially the poor, the neglected, and rejected. Because who knows? Maybe we'll entertain some angels along the way. Amen. And now I invite you to stand and join in saying together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For CELC, our caring and sharing partner this month, and for this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For our creation care ministries, and the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, justice, and oppression. For Jenny, Aspen, Shalom, and family, Gail, Rob, Larry, Doris, Bailey, Sebastian, Joe, Andre, Lisa, Steve, Tad, Charlie, Linda, Christy, Nancy, Khadija, P. Alexander, Maria, Pete and Linda, Mike and Mary, and all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friends, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Wayne, our bishop, Devin, our rector, and Craig, our deacon. And for all bishops and other ministers. 
for all who serve God in God's church. For all who serve in the military, especially Anne, Aaron, Peter, Greg, Sean, and Tyler. For Jake, Sarah, Stephen, Anne, Sam, Ben, Maria, and all others who are serving in a place of danger and for the special needs of this congregation. For Father Devin. We pray for those suffering as a result of gun violence and for gun violence to cease. Victims of war and natural disasters, those suffering from COVID-19 and its variants, all other illnesses, their caregivers, and for refugees from the Ukraine and other countries. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For this congregation here present, for all members of the church. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise, we praise your, your name, name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them, who we'll put their trust in you. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of Christ be always with you. Also with you. I have most of them memorized. Good morning. I have several announcements. Uh, the first one is that Father Devin is on a medical leave and will be back uh, when things are better. Uh, secondly, we are going to um, continue uh, as, of, as of September 18th and on is that we will only be doing two services, the Jubilee service and the 1030 service. Um, on the 11th, there will be one service, uh, which will be at 930. And then there will be the uh, parish picnic following that. Um, other than that, I don't really have much to say except for what is in the bulletin. 
but I ask for your prayers for this parish and for Father Devin. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn Proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all but in all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Great, this is a 
Mighty Christ is in the heaven. Now let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us 
as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.
Go forth in the name of Christ.